Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to explain to you how the mercury barometer works. What is a barometer? A barometer is an instrument which is used to measure atmospheric pressure. And here I have a liquid in glass barometer which is a mercury barometer. What does it consist of? It consists of a tall tube, this tube here. This tube may be made up of, uh, is made out of glass. It's about one meter long, one meter long. And it is thin, more like a burette. In fact, you can use a burette to simulate a barometer. All you need to do is just close uh, the tap tightly so that it is airtight and then you put mercury uh, all the way up to the brim then you close uh, the opening of the burette then invert that tube in such a way that the open end is right under the surface of mercury in a beaker and then you remove whatever you had used to close that opening this is what is going to happen. As, you, as soon as you remove um, whatever gadget you had used or whatever stopper you had put here to prevent mercury from coming out, the level of mercury is going to drop from the topmost part to some height there. It will never drop all the way to this level. It will drop up to a certain height. Why does, it hap why does this happen? This happens because the atmosphere supports this column of mercury. It happens because the atmosphere supports this column of mercury. If you're doing this at sea level, at the coast, you're going to discover that the value of that this distance here, h, will be 76 centimeters and of course the liquid you're using here is mercury hg so you will say that the atmospheric pressure at the coast or the standard atmospheric pressure is 76 centimeters of mercury you're going to write it like this pressure due to the atmosphere i'm just going to use this abbreviation there pressure due to the atmosphere can be expressed as 76 centimeters of mercury this is another way this is another unit that we can use to express pressure or to measure pressure 76 centimeters is like 760 millimeters uh, you multiply centimeters by 10 to convert into millimeters and you write Hg. Or you can say it is 0 0.76 meters of mercury. All these are ways of expressing pressure and here I am measuring atmospheric pressure at sea level. We're going to see what happens to this height as we climb higher and higher. But let us convert this pressure into newtons per meters uh, squared. Newtons per meter squared. We are going to say pressure is equals to rho hg. In this case, this is the capital H. Rho is 13,600. This H in meters is 0. 76 and you are taking the value of the gravitational field strength as 10 newton per kilogram let's see what this one gives us as usual i'd like you to arm always arm yourself with a calculator when we are doing physics when we are engaging ourselves with any kind of calculation because this helps you to understand so you're going to get 103,000 one or three thousand three hundred and sixty newtons per meters squared this approximately we can say this approximately one hundred thousand newtons 
per meters squared. So this is the pressure that is exerted by the atmosphere at sea level. How do I know that that is the case? This is what we do. We look at this mercury column. We identify this point here which is at the same level with the outside here and put a point there. Then we come to the outside. We also put a point there at the surface of mercury. Then we are going to call this point uh, P and this is point uh, let's give it um, a better letter. We can call it point A and this is point B. And then this is our argument because point A and point B are on the same horizontal level like that then pressure at point A is equal to pressure at point B. I will repeat that statement because it is very important. The reason you know that pressure at point A is equal to pressure at point B is because point A and point B are at the same horizontal level. So that is how we know that pressure at point A is equal to pressure at point B. But pressure at point A is uh, pressure due to the atmosphere. So P A T M. Then we come inside here. This space here is a vacuum. In a vacuum we do not have any air. And so the vacuum exerts zero pressure. So the pressure exerted on the surface of the mercury here is zero plus the pressure that is exerted by this mercury column at point B is equal to rho H G. And that is what we have calculated here. Rho H G, which is equal to 100 so basically that is how you would calculate the pressure at a point in a certain town uh, given the column of mercury which is supported by the atmosphere. What would happen if we were using water in that tube? And remember, the density of water, let me just write it here, though we are not using it. Density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cubed. We are going to repeat the exact calculation. We are going to put water in a, in a tube. And then we are going to invert that water in a container of water and then we remove our finger. Because in this case, it would be safe enough to close that tube with our finger. But if we were using mercury, because mercury is toxic, you would put on leather gloves. Leather gloves so that uh, you don't get harmed by mercury. And, um, and then when you remove your finger, if you're using water, then you will discover that if that tube is not long enough, there will be no vacuum here. So you will continuously use a longer and a longer pipe, a longer and a longer pipe, until you get some vacuum above the level of water in the tube. So how much would be this height of the water column at sea level. So we are going to say that we already know the atmospheric pressure at sea level is 100,000. Rho for water is 1,000. We do not know the H when we are using water, but we know that G is that. And you are going to see that the height of water column 
would be about 10 meters. 10 meters. One meter is about this much. So 10 meters is like the a three story building. Three story building. So such a manometer would be very huge, will be very bulky. It cannot fit in the lab. And that would be one of the disadvantages of using a macu a, a water barometer or a barometer whose liquid is water because the density of water is very very small the height of the of the water column will be too big and uh, it makes the barometer to be very bulky remember why that happens it happens because the density of mercury is very small in fact the density of mercury uh, not the density of mercury but rather the density of water is very small compared to the density of mercury so so far so good what would happen if we were using a, an air barometer an air barometer we are going to look at this when we look at a situation where we try to determine the altitude of a town using a barometer so i will come back to that calculation so let's go ahead and see other features of this barometer i've prepared some slides here and i want us to look at the next one here remember this height here is h and this is mercury and we know how much h is it is 76 centimeters. Now, if we get that tube, we get hold of the tube, we pull the tube upwards we'll, without allowing it to come out of the mercury. We just pull it upwards slightly. This is what we are going to observe, that the height of the mercury level will not change. It will remain the same. But this space is the one which is going to increase. You can see the tube has moved upwards slightly and therefore that is what is going to happen in, in fact the, the original the original barometer is this one here with h being equal to 76 centimeters it is similar to the original barometer here what i've just done is now on this one we have raised this uh, tube raised it up you can see that the space above the mercury has increased the tube has slightly moved upwards you can see originally it was here it has moved through that space and uh, that an equal space over there what you should be able to realize is, is that the height will not change it will remain the same if on the other side you lower it you lower the tube you're going to see that this one is going to reduce but again this height will not change why is it that it doesn't change what we have inside here is a vacuum and since a vacuum exerts uh, zero pressure then this column of mercury is supported purely by atmospheric pressure that is very important statement the column of mercury is supported only by the atmospheric pressure let's see what happens if you still lower it much much lower than that there remember this was the original pipe with 76 centimeters here it is the one that we we used here in the first um, slide now I have the same barometer here I've lowered it in such a way that the tube is just equal to 76 centimeters you'll find that the mercury is going to fill up that space it will fill up that space remember this one is a vacuum if you do this and the length the height of the mercury column is 76 and the mercury does not fill up that container then you will conclude that this space here was not a vacuum there was some air 
and that air has exerted a small amount of pressure on top of the mercury at the top, pushing it down slightly. That is what you will conclude. However, we are assuming a, a, an ideal situation whereby a perfect situation whereby this space here is a vacuum. If you continue pushing the tube down, this time this level is going to drop because we have not allowed that mercury to move up to be supported by the atmospheric pressure. So in this, in this case, when we calculate the pressure here, uh, it will not be equal to the pressure here reason being there is the topmost part of the container which is now exerting pressure on the mercury so the pressure that is exerted by this top part of the container uh, downwards like that on the mercury we can call it p and therefore when we look at this point a and point b again we can say uh, because point A and point B are on the same horizontal level, we can say pressure at point A is equal to pressure at point B. But now pressure at point A is due to the pressure due to the container to this top part of the tube plus the pressure due to this mercury column H and at point B, it is 100,000. And you can be able to see, I can be able to calculate the pressure that this container exerts on the mercury. Because we have said, if you continue pushing it down below this point, then it is the container will, that will now be pushing the liquid from the top downwards. Downwards. So you want to calculate the pressure that that container is exerting on the mercury. This is a very unique situation and I'd like you to remember it because you can get a question which gives you this situation and this situation and then you are asked, calculate the pressure that the top part of this tube exerts on the top surface of the mercury in this situation. If this height is given, maybe let us say it is uh, 70, 70 centimeters. You can come here and say, you can now calculate this pressure in terms of, in terms of height, centimeters of mercury, and say the pressure due to the container plus the pressure due to the mercury column, which is 70, is equal to the atmospheric pressure, which is 76. And you can see that the pressure that the container exerts on the mercury is actually six centimeters of mercury. That is how much the pressure the container is exerting. Now let's continue and look at a different situation. Suppose this was the situation. Now we are tilting the tube. We are tilting the tube. Remember the middle one was 76 centimeters this one here it's still 76 centimeters if we tilt that tube slightly you will find that the vertical height of the mercury still remains 76 this length of the column of mercury may be longer than this one but when we look at the vertical component of that length that one there remains the same so this is what I'm saying. It's longer than this one here, but it's the vertical component that matters. So you may be told that it is tilted at an angle of uh, 60 degrees from the vertical. I mean 30 degrees from the vertical, meaning that this is 60 degrees and you're given the length of this mercury column. It's always possible to use that because when we are using the equation, Pressure is equals to rho hg. This is usually the vertical height. Vertical height, straight height like that. It's not the slant. If you're given the slant, then you can use skills in trigonometry to be able to calculate 
that particular height that you need. Still the space above the mercury is a vacuum. If you lower this tube until the end of it falls below this vertical height, then the mercury is going to fill up the container. And if you continue, uh, the, the reason why it just fills it up, at some point here it just fills it up. But if you continue lower than that, you'll find that it completely fills it up and there is no space. Again, you'll find that the pressure at this point, when it just fills up, will be atmospheric. But when it is lower than that point, as it is in this particular situation, you can see there is some space here. You can see that space there. Again, you will realize that at this point, the pressure is lower than atmospheric. Is lower than atmospheric. By how much? It is equal to the pressure that this container is exerting on the liquid downwards. Then the pressure exerted by the container, by the container on the mercury, plus the pressure exerted by the mercury at that point will be equal to the outside pressure here because again the two points, this point at this point, are at the same horizontal level and the pressure at those two points are the same. Let's look at a different situation uh, to that one. Got another slide here. And here we have it. It's about now changing the size of the container. The size of the container. That tube. We can use a wider tube. It does not matter whether it's a thin tube or wider tube or very wide tube. It does not really matter. The vertical height is what matters. It will remain 76 centimeters throughout so long as you're doing this experiment at sea level so that one is very easy to understand let's look at a, a, another situation where now we have this situation i've got the previous tubing which is i keep on referring right from the first diagram because they're in the same position and this other one that I've put there. So this height here is 76. Remember I'm doing this experiment at sea level. If I get another barometer, and of course this one is a vacuum. If I'm doing that experiment at the same point at sea level, and maybe for some reason I get this one to be something like, let's say 65 centimeters instead of 76, then I conclude that this space is not a vacuum. How do I know that this space is a vacuum? It's because this height is exactly 76 centimeters. How do I know that this space here is not a vacuum and there is some gas which is exerting pressure downwards on the surface of the mercury at the top. How do I know that it is not a vacuum? It is because this height is less than 76 centimeters of mercury. So having known that there is a gas there, I'm going to say that the pressure that the gas exerts, P, I'm going to call it P due to the gas. I'm now going to come to this point. I do the usual stuff. I identify that point A, that point B, and what justification do I use for writing this statement that pressure at point A is equal to pressure at point B? What is the reason? How am I justified to write down that sentence? It's because point A and point B are on the same horizontal level. Therefore, you say pressure at point A is equal to pressure at point B. And then I do the next important thing. I ask myself, what are the fluids above that particular point A? You find that whatever is above point A is atmospheric. 
So I know this one is atmospheric pressure. It is 76 centimeters of mercury. What is above point B? One of them is the pressure due to the gas. The other one is the pressure exerted by this mercury column, which is 65 centimeters of mercury. And I can be able to see that pressure due to the gas when I rearrange and subtract will be 76 minus 65 everything centimeters of mercury and this one is going to give me 11 centimeters of mercury which can be converted into into newtons per meter squared by the way this is the 11 that I'm talking about this one here is a small h that I'm talking about. Remember, this is capital H, atmospheric pressure. So this is a small h that we are referring to. At the same time, look at this. I could even have drawn this line here and consider this point and this point. I'm going to come to that one in a moment. But I want to convert this into newtons per meter squared. I'm going to say this one is going to be equal to rho h g. The row of mercury is 13,600. I'm using 0 0.11 and I'm using the value of G as 10. Again, work with me here. Very important. Never forget your calculator when you're doing problem solving all the time. And if you don't have one, acquire one. This is 14,960. 14,000. 960 newtons per meter squared or pascals. Now let me see whether I'll get the same value. Let me see whether I'll get the same value. When I use this point here, point K and point M, I've drawn a horizontal line and said pressure at point K is equal to pressure at point M. What justification do I have for saying that? Is because point K and point M are along the same horizontal line. Don't forget that concept. Very important. So pressure at point K is equal to this pressure due to the vacuum, which is zero, plus pressure due to this mercury column, which is rho HG. You know this is small h. Is equal to pressure at point M, which is equal to P gas and you can see p gas gives us the same value it is 11 centimeters of mercury because this h is given by 76 minus 65 and i can go ahead and get it as 14960 just like before newtons per meter squared and that is how you use the barometer to determine, first of all, to measure pressure at a place, to investigate what happens to the barometer when various things are done, to calculate the atmospheric pressure at a point in terms of centimeters of mercury or newtons per meter squared, and to even identify a faulty barometer. A faulty mercury barometer will have air above the mercury column. What is a faulty barometer? It is one which has got uh, air above the mercury instead of it, of that space being a vacuum because the presence of that air or gas is going to exert pressure. Now in your course book you will find a similar question like this one. I want you to go to your course book have apparently uh, not identified that particular page otherwise I would have given you that page but I know in the exercise there is an exact question just like this go and practice on how you calculate the pressure of the enclosed gas in that particular pipe
Otherwise, in the next lesson, we are going to look at how we'll determine the altitude of a place, the altitude of a place using an air barometer, a barometer whose barometric liquid is air and not mercury. Of course, we are going to make a few assumptions there, but we'll discuss that those assumptions when we reach there. Go through the video again. Go through the points that we've discussed with you because you understand that a repetition is the first law of learning. Repetition. When you learn something, don't just assume that you know it. No. There are so many things which can happen, which tests whether you know it or not. So how do you ensure that you embed this knowledge in you? It is by repeating. I want you to repeat this video. I want you to go and work out questions which I'll be giving you. Even if I've not said you repeat a particular video, go through it all the same. You know we have already talked about pressure in solids. Go through that uh, video about pressure in solids. We've already talked about force. We've already talked about density. Go through all those uh, videos. And by this time, I know you are already a member or you have subscribed to my YouTube channel where you find all these lectures. I move step by step the way these materials are covered in your syllabus. So if you find that I'm covering a certain topic and maybe uh, in the syllabus this one is ahead, know that I've already covered those materials somewhere else. So just go to the channel. The link for this particular channel is in the video description. There is a uh, a link I've put there. Just click on that and it will take you directly to the to the channel where now you can have uh, so many uh, videos where I'm talking about particular concepts. So you see you in the next video where I'm going to use an air barometer to determine the altitude of a town.